tell me about growing up. Uh, what was the music that resonated in your household that inspired you? Oh, three things inspired me. Aretha, Stevie, and Earth, Wind & Fire. <laughs> they were the ones that got me. What was the first instrument you gravitated towards? Um, piano. Mm -hmm. um, I never had any lessons on anything, but um, I soon found the funk with bass. <laughs> it what wasn't were, long. What were some of the bass players that first inspired you? Oh, some of the bass players that first inspired me was definitely Larry Graham. Okay. Um, uh, Marcus Miller. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it was all about slap. And Mark King, of course, who Mark now is a really dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first started to play? When did you first pick up the instrument? When I was 12, mm -hmm. I think it was, I picked up a bass and thought, well, this is, because I was a guitaring and no one in my band played bass. Okay. We needed bass, so I thought, oh, well, I'll have a go. Now, even to this day, people don't understand what an electric bass is. It looks like a guitar. How do you explain the instrument to civilians? Um, it's the bridge between melody and rhythm. Okay. Is how I always explain it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your first gigs, your first experiences on stage. Wow, petrified. <laughs> <laughs> and um, why am I doing this? And loving it at the same time. So a mixture of absolute horror and, um, and fun at the same time. <laughs> when did you realize in your life that this was going to become your life's work? Because being a musician, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, is not the most steadiest profession in the world. No, it's, it's, it's the best and the worst in the world. I knew as soon as I started playing, I knew that was it for me. Mm -hmm. It was immediate, but I also knew that it was going to be a long, hard slog mm -hmm. at the same time. Now, when you first started playing and you started playing in bands and doing performances, did you start thinking about composing or in production, or was that something that was always in your, your makeup that you thought you would gravitate towards? That? I'd say it was, it was the same. Mm -hmm. I, I loved the playing, but I was always thinking, as I was playing, that keyboard player's not doing the right thing, and um, <laughs> he should be doing something different. The drummers, I don't like his kick drum pattern. <laughs> I need to sort that out as well. So I was always thinking as I was playing that, T tell it me about change. some of the um, some of the artists that you work with that you learn the most from. I music directed for Rose Royce okay. for a while, which was great. Their drummer Henry um, leads with his left, and okay. he had a very different style of playing, and that right. um, that was interesting. That made me do all kinds of things that I wouldn't have done normally. Okay. Um, Desiree, I was with for a while. Okay. Um, we want her big hit that was on the what was it? I gotta be me or I. Um, be gotta be strong. Gotta be strong. Yeah. Um, no, I wasn't on that. Although I did play them live. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and um, George, funnily enough, George has steered me in all. Boy George, that how did is. You, how did you hook up with Boy George? Uh, at what point in his career did you hook up with him? Oh, 1990. Two ninety three. Okay. So it was after the big supernova in the eighties when he was yep. the he biggest was, star in the world. He was the biggest star in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, photographed more than Princess Diana apparently okay. at that time. Um, he was in a studio and I was in a, the same studio, mm. and he poked his head around the corner and said, "Can you come and help me do some vocals that the people I've got can't do them very well?" <laughs> and I ended up doing the vocals, the guitar, the bass, and the keyboards. Oh wow! <laughs> and that was it. Okay. And how did your career progress with, uh, with Boy George? Um, we started writing mm -hmm. quite early on and um, just got on really well as writers. Mm -hmm. And uh, musically, he liked what I was doing. And lyrically, I loved what he was doing. He's an amazing lyricist. Okay. And, and when the band goes out on tour, when you're, you're performing live, you have to balance his history with what he's doing now that's uh, contemporary. Um, what, how, what are the challenges of that? Because people have this impression of Boy as the guy in Culture Club, but he's done a lot of other things as well. He has. Um, well, we try and keep everyone happy. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll interject some hits in between some right. solo stuff. And uh, so it's kind of a mixture, but mm -hmm. he's always wanting to move forward. Right. He doesn't like looking back. He likes looking forward, yeah. which is fun and brings up new challenges. Does he realize what an uh, uh, inspiration he was to a generation of musicians? He does see that, okay. but I don't think he realizes how much. They made remarkable, remarkable records. They did. Mm -hmm. Very complex. Mm -hmm. um, complex in their simplicity, I like to say, because right, the, right. they were pop tunes nonetheless, <laughs> but they had very complex arrangements to mm -hmm. them. And what is your role in his band now? I'm music director mm -hmm. in his band now. So you pick all the musicians and you... I do. Mm -hmm. 
What do you What are you looking for when you when you look for a side man? What's someone up? who's someone who's on top of their game, but is can fit in personally. Because there's nothing worse than people that don't fit in mm -hmm. personality wise. You've got to be right for the band, and you've got to be able to play. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I don't. Doesn't matter what upbringing you've had. It doesn't matter what ethnic background you're from. Just be able to play and and have a laugh, and that's it. Wow, that's it, really. Now you've worked as a sideman. Talk about the temperament of a sideman. You you want to show off your skills, yet that's not your name on the ticket. They didn't come to see <laughs> Kevin; they came to see someone else. If George makes a mistake, he looks bad. If I make a mistake, he looks bad. So I can't. So I have to make him look good. Mm -hmm. That's my whole role: is to make George and Culture Club look the best they can be. Okay. So. You get into that mentality. You get into that way of dealing with things. Mm. I can't make him look bad. I have to make him look amazing. If I play amazing, he looks good. So that's what all of us should be doing in the that, band. That, that is, you just as fine what a side man is. <laughs> and when you look back on your recording career, what are the records that you're most proud of? A Boy George album, um, which was a solo album of his called This Is What I Do. Okay, when did that come? Uh, two thousand and fifteen. Okay, all right, yeah. And that was, um, I think that was him just being him and doing whatever he wanted to do and letting us do whatever we wanted to do, and it was an amazing project. Mm, okay.